Welcome in, folks. Kevin Thomas, John Epps here from Moving the Chains. Our week five preview show, John. The season is kind of flying by. Um, you know, got a lot of ball left still, but it's still we're, we're six weeks in here all of a sudden. But a lot of really good games last week, John. I think this week's slate may be even better. Uh, I do have a few less games, a couple more buys popping in this week, it seems like. But still a lot of really, really high-powered matchups. Yeah, a lot of cross-classification matchups again. This for most schools, if not everybody, will be the last week of non-region play. Mm -hmm. So time to get everything worked out, get everything in line, and work on uh, work on your playoff standing and, and winning your region after this week. Yeah, I've got a couple region games already, too, we'll talk about here in a little bit, but a lot of non-region for sure. Uh, this is you guys' first time. We appreciate you. Um, we do a live preview show here on Tuesday Nights on Facebook. Also check us out on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, etc. at Moving Chains and OB. V-I-N-C-H-A-I-N-S. Also do a audio version podcast comes out after this show. Google, Spotify, Apple, etc. We do a recap show on Sundays. Audio only version comes out on podcast. Got a lot of great interviews coming out for you guys. We had one last week with the with the, the Tom, uh, Thomas McElhaney at Dorchester. We've had uh, this JL man coach, Scoot Watts. We had Leon Bulware this week from Louisville. Louisville, John, 5-0. Oh, they're streaking right now. They're high in our poll. Great talking to Coach Bulware. Check that out if you haven't. A couple more big ones coming here uh, this week and next week as well, so definitely stay tuned for all that. Check out our website, movingchains.com. Get all your info from there. We do uh, have a really cool message board. we we'll talk some trash on there, so get in there and join us on that, John. But anything else I'm missing before we kind of get into some of our uh, our big games here? I think we're set. Awesome, awesome. Well, this is our Week 5 preview show from Security Advantage Federal Credit Union, like I said there. John, but let's get rolling here with our games of the week, brought to you by Carolina Orthopedic and, and Neurosurgical Associates. Our first game of the week here, John, this is a region matchup, a big time one in region matchup, and that's St. Joseph's traveling to Southside Christian. St. Joseph's five and zero, oh, St. Uh, Southside Christian zero oh and three, John. But don't let those records fool you. This should be a very good ball game. This is gonna be a great game. This is two, uh, despite the records, two really good teams. If you're familiar at all with one A football, you know Southside Christian's good. They're not bad this year. They've just scheduled a very tough. A lot of out-state opponents mm -hmm. um, as well. They played um, some out-state opponents. They played up, uh, played Abbeville earlier. You know, two A powerhouse. Uh, they have really cut their teeth early, and this is going to be uh, extremely fun region. This is going to be the region in one A. The South Side, uh, St. Joseph's, and then Christ Church mm -hmm. as well. Also in this region, got to be the strongest region in all one A. Yeah. Be really fun there. Uh, last week, St. Joe's fifty-five to zero win over Ware Shoals. Quarterback Walker Ru Walker Wood. He's a really good thrower, a really good runner as well, John. I think two weeks ago had a big game against Seneca in that game, along with running back William Gillespie. One of my favorite players on the team, though, John. And if I, if I say this name incorrect, let me know. Johnny Jarazuski, linebacker, net win over three a Seneca two weeks ago. Had sixteen tackles. That's big nice. game for Johnny there. Also, uh, Tony Sullivan and and. Uh, Trey Sanders on defense are playing well for them. Southside Christian coming off the rare double bye, John. Have not played <laughs> in three weeks here. After coming off a out loss to Abbeville three weeks back. They have quarterback Ja'Cory Martin, you know, really talented player, good runner, good thrower. Um, you know, wide receiver Colin Phillips is back. 3-0 lineman back from last year's team that won state. Defense led by Michael Wright, Woodfield, and Zach Martin, Ja'Cory's little brother. He was a little bigger than Ja'Cory, but, but he is technically younger, but – a lot of a lot of town on Southside Christian. They lost a couple guys up front on the D line from last year's team, John. That worries me some against a good rushing attack like St. Joe's. But they held a pretty powerful rushing attack in Abbeville to only twenty eight points a couple weeks ago. Who are you lean in this game here between St. Joseph's and Southside Christian? It, it's really hard for me to ever pick against Southside Christian. But the fact that the one game that I know, so Southside's only played one game in the state. Mm -hmm. That's Abbeville. Uh, we've seen Abbeville. We know what they've got. Uh, they're a really, really good team. But what I am really impressed at, what just pops out between both of these teams, the fact that uh, St. Joseph's been dominating. They've been dominating. The only game that has been a game was when they went to Seneca yeah. and played the Bobcats. Who was undefeated in 3A before that game. And they were good. Seneca is a pretty good 3A team. Yep. Beat those guys 45-35, and that just – that speaks a lot of volumes to me. I'm not saying Southside can't do that. I just haven't seen that kind of performance from Southside yet, and I don't know enough about that commerce team from Georgia that they played. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's another team, uh, a Christian school as well, a Charlotte Christian, yep. uh, that they played. Don't know 
anything about those guys really so I, I, it's hard for me to judge those performances I just really like the way that St. Joe's has been playing um, so far this year I, New England St. Joe's it's hard to see Southside go 0-4 but I think this game and that Christchurch game for Southside are going to be very very difficult especially this game St. Joe's I mean they're ranked number one in 1A um, I had them 1A they're number one in my 1A poll mm -hmm. as well. In my, my vote. Same. I think this year they are the team to beat. Um, we'll find out Friday. Yeah, it's going to be tough for me to figure out with the Sabres, you know, how much does two weeks off help or hurt you? You know, and obviously, you know, you want to get healthy on your bye week, but, I mean, they only played three games before that. You know, two weeks is – maybe it's a good thing because they lost some things. They haven't got to figure out some pieces still. But two weeks off is a long time. Um, them playing at home is a big advantage because this is a big rivalry game. You're obviously St. Joe's, Price Church, all the like Christian, all really big rivalries there. Playing at home is a big plus for the Sabres. And I'm a big fan of Corey Martin. I I'm leaning him, leaning Southside like Christian on a close one. But Walker Wood, watch this kid for now. He's a good player for St. Joe's, but I like Southside like Christian on a close one. I think if Southside gets off to a good start, mm -hmm. and, and it's not that oh they they got to get off to a good start to, to be able to beat St. Joe's. I think if they get off to a good start, it proves okay, that two weeks off isn't a hindrance on how they're going to perform. Yeah. I, in my opinion, I expect them to come out, not sluggish, they're going to be pumped up, they're going to be juicing mm -hmm. play for this game for sure. That's not going to be the problem. Just how crisp and clean they are. Yeah. You know, we're going to see some penalties, we're going to see some miscommunication. That's what I'm worried about at the start of the game. If we don't see that, then I think we'll know very quick, okay, the two-week layoff is not going to have an effect on them. But... I could see that happening a little bit. And not that I necessarily think that's going to be the difference in the game, um, but I think it, that is something for St. Joe's that goes in their favor a little bit. No doubt about it. should be a great 1A ball game. There are a couple comments for me going. Kevin Ron Harris says, Good evening. Go Gray Collegiate Warrior. goes, Hey, Kevin Ron, appreciate you tuning in, man. Gray has turned the corner, John. Back to back wins there. Chris Smith says, Thoughts on Chester. That's based for a Leesville opponent this week. Chester, we'll get more into that game later on, but I think Chester's a, a good team. Had a tough loss last week at the Copper Ridge. We'll break good that game one down. Though. Another break good, that one down. Uh, tough game about the Cyclones. Yep. Dajun Robinson says, Louisville. Yeah, the Lions are playing great ball, man. 5-0, another win last week. We had Coach Boulware on this week. Uh, great interview with him. Loved talking to him. But, John, our second call of the game of the week here, another really big one, 5A Sumter sitting at 5-0, and traveling on the road to 2A, uh, 3-1, and Oceanside Collegiate. You know, Oceanside continues to play, to play a tough schedule. They play Carolina Forest, South Forest, Great Collegiate, etc. Um, a lot of big boys there. Sumter went off that 16 nothing win over over Somerville last week. Oceanside had a bye week last week. I know we said it earlier in earlier in the year that when Oceanside was playing, you know, uh, Marlboro County, Carolina Forest, bigger schools, it was still wasn't really an upset. You know, how do you feel about this one here between Sumter and Oceanside? So I think, in going off of what we've seen from South Florence. Um, that's the lone loss. Yeah. The one a one-point point game on the road. By Oceanside South Lawrence. That's your only loss. I'm, I'm a little bit worried. That they had a close game against Carolina Forest. Which mm -hmm. I, and I know that's a little school going 2A against 5A. I know that's a big deal. But um, that game being very close scared me a little bit. They, they played really well against Marlboro County last week. Um, Sumter is really, really good. I think they played their – that's a, probably their best game last week. Yeah. Shutting out a uh, Somerville team that has been on the rise. I just, I like Oceanside in this game. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not worried about 5A, 2A. I just, I think Oceanside's better. Um, yeah. And they can score. I mean, they've scored against some really good opponents. I think they're just a little bit better. The problem is, it can Sumter, it's probably the best defense they've played all mm -hmm. year. Not probably. It's got to be the best team they've played all year. If they can score, if they can move the ball a little bit, I like Oceanside in this game. Now, if that defense is – if Sumter, if that game got defense is that good and they shut down Oceanside, oh, we're going to have a different story on our hands. But I I believe in Oceanside in this ball. I do too, yeah. Sumter, I mentioned last week, 16-0 winner over Somerville. Running back John Peoples ran for 110 yards. The problem with Sumter, John, the passing game is non-existent. Uh, the Merchant kid, Merchant kid hasn't really gotten a goal yet. they got to figure that out. And they got to find a way to get Zaire Gamble to book the ball more on offense. You know, one of the premier athletes in the state, a DB commit to, I think, App State, uh, I believe he plays a little bit of both ways for them, needs to be on offense more, get some, uh, them some, uh, you know, some, some explosiveness on that side of the ball. And as far as Oceanside Collegiate goes, 
Big game for Von Blue every week, it seems like. Averaging 172 yeah. on the ground right now. Ran for 200-plus against Marlboro County. Quarterback Edward Rydenbach playing some good ball. Our trigger Jason Kraft. Chick is playing very well. Everybody knows the big old lineman Monroe Freeland. You know, he plays D-line, too. He's a really a, a force in there for them. Defense led by Ben Britton, Timmy Castine, Kraftchick Mormon, and, and Zach Hagedon. A very talented group there um, there at Oceanside. Love what Coach Wilkes is doing. You know, we had him on preseason to talk about that team when he got the job. Definitely check out that interview. But Oceanside, like I, like you said, John, I think they win this game. Like I, They've got enough playmakers where I think if you can score 21 points against Sumter, I think you win. And I think Oceanside can do that. It, and I, it may not even be that much. Yeah. Um, it, and, you know, you think about it, you think of 2858. Oh, two, two, one of the things you think about is depth, but also you think about size. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not a problem for Oceanside. Yeah. You know, size on the line, not an issue, especially the offensive line going up against a really good Sumter defense. Well, it would be a great test for the both of them because mm-hmm. it could be it could be the best offensive line that Sumter's going to face, on yep. it, or at least at this point. So it would be a great test for them. Very good defense for Sumter. Um, strong offensive line. Obviously, very potent running attack mm-hmm. for, for Oceanside Collegiate. I think it's going to be a really good matchup of some strength on strength between these two teams, especially they're in the trenches. If you like, you know, that that battle between the defensive line and offensive line, when the Ocean side's got the ball, um, certainly going to have some um, high-power talent going up against one another there. I expect a really close game. I expect a pretty low-scoring game. I don't know if anyone gets into the 20s. May not. May if not. anyone gets into the 20s, I think they're definitely going to win. I mean, I could see this being a 17-14 type yeah. game. Yeah, Sumter, you mentioned that defensive line. A little bit smaller than they've had in the past. They don't have Davin Jackson anymore. They don't have Montique Rames. Uh, what was the other guy that went to NC State? Uh, the guy that got him to Florida. Justice Thune, he's yeah. not there anymore. So not quite as big up front. Linebackers are very good again. But I think that Freeling and Blue uh, get that run game going, folks. I think they win a close one, like you said there. It should be a really fun ball game down there at Johnson Haygood. Playing at home, too, a big plus for Oceanside. Big time, uh, big time. You know, again, we talk about, oh, two, hey, five, eight. That's gonna be the biggest stadium that something's yeah. played in. Yeah. You know, all you know, getting to play at Johnson Hague against I know I was mentioning this before. That's such a cool thing for us to be able is. to do. Um, you know, I think at the at the college level you have to have your own stadium. It's mm-hmm. weird to play in the pro stadium. But the high school level, yeah. And Spartanburg used to do it. Yep. They used to play at Walford Stadium and it was such a cool, such a cool thing. Um, as a child, I thought Spartanburg High and Walford College were the same thing. Makes sense. I they <laughs> similar color helmets, so it blew me away they were two different. It has that kind of feel, yeah. um, you know, you, especially when you're a good team. Mm-hmm. You're a good team. You invite someone into that building. It, it's intimidating. It's it's a little intimidating. It is a lot of fun. A couple more comments here from me. Anthony Berry says, Marlboro at Dillon. That Highway 9 game there, John, always a lot of fun. Uh, in the white walls this week, too. Get it out here in a little bit, Anthony. That should be a fun, fun ball game. Patrick says, how about those Indians? Uh, woo, what a game. Crazy. Big win, Patrick. You know, the defense has been pl- coming along, it's like, every week. Offense finally put something together. Had a big win over, over Northwestern last. We'll get to the end of the big Gaffney Fort D game here in a little bit as well, John. But one more comment from Zach. Says, good evening, guys. Have fun getting on the Twitter space. Y'all Friday night talking some ball. Yeah, Zach, appreciate you coming on uh, last Friday. And I really enjoyed chatting with you and hearing about that uh, Clinton-Chapman game. That was awesome. Hope you can hop on again Friday night after the South Aiken game for, for Clinton here, John. But now our third game from Kona. This is a big one here too, John. 5A Burns sitting at 5-0. and Traveling down... To Florence to take on West Florence, Jody Jennerette, and the 4 0 West Florence Knights, John. This is going to be a fun ball game. You know, Burns, they blew out Wren 42 7. That game was, what, 14 7 at half last week, I think it right, was. Right. Um, West Florence went off a bye. So, so no, uh, had a couple weeks to, to prepare for this one there. You know, for, for Burns, they've been led by Colby Shaw. Had another three touchdowns last week. He's got 17 on the year. Another big game from Kai Cook. He's averaging, I think, 102 per game. Um, receiving there. Remember, RJ Livingston is doing well, doing a good job for them with Weaver outside as well. Camarius Bomar is supposed to be back this week. Big, big for for them to get another weapon back outside. Defense led by Foster and Good. They have had a little bit of trouble with the linebacker spot with the Dingle kid going out. Um, you know, for the year, a couple of injuries last week. We had Rob Brown on our, on our Twitter space. The Burns play by play boys talking about some linebacker issues they had. So that could be big against the West Florence team led by Deuce Hudson. Another one of the best athletes in the state. Really good dual threat guy there. Running back, Darren Lloyd. Big time DB prospect for next year, Kelvin Hunter, playing the kind of that safety DB spot along with uh, Franklin Emerson at linebacker. This is going to be a heck of a ball game. Uh, you know, you look at 4A, 5A, 
West Point's already beat two 5A teams in Socrates and a very good Lexington team. Very good Lexington team. This is going to be a way of a ball game at, uh, at West Point's new stadium this Friday night. Yeah, this is going to be an awesome matchup. And this is uh, the second 4A team that Burns will play. They've, yes. They've picked on some, some 3A schools, um, BC and Chapman. That Greenville game, a what we thought, maybe not quite as good of a Greenville team as we thought at the time. Uh, but Burns was able to, and it's been it's been standard story for Burns. Start off a little bit slow in the first half, but then second mm-hmm. half, they yeah. put it pedal to the metal and pulled away from opponents um, outside of Greer. But they have really pulled away, pulled away from Greenville in the second half. Um, they did a run mm-hmm. last week. They're gonna have to do that. They're gonna have to good. I mean, they're gonna have to have to play full forty eight minute game against West Florence, really good West Florence team. I like Burns a little bit more in this one. I think they've got um, – I like the – even without Dingle, I'm impressed with the defense. The defense has been much improved over the last year. Um, and I think that with Bomar coming back, I think they've got enough firepower yeah. to be a – I think they're a slightly more dangerous team on this football field with West Florence. I like them in a very, very close game. But this is, this is a really big game for Burns. Um, to me, the biggest game since the opener against B.C., we thought that game was going to be a little bit closer. Burns mm-hmm. showed, hey, we got a lot better than all season. Yeah. They proved it that night. T- this Friday night, I think they proved, okay, are we legit a top five team in the state? Because you can, if you handle West Florence, you handle business over in Florence County Friday night, I think you proved to 5A, hey, we're here. What they've done to this point, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That Greenville game was very impressive at the time. But this is going to be their biggest test so far. And also for West Florence, this is such a big game for the Knights because over across town, your rivals, the Bruins, they're the hottest thing in the state right yes. now. Yes, and, and it's not close. Yeah. Um, you talk about who two best teams in the state to me, South Florence, Oceanside. Um, if West Florence wants to take some of that shine, get some of that spotlight that the North Sellers and that whole South mm-hmm. March crew has been getting lately beat a really, really good 5A team in Burns. Um, and I think they're good enough to be able to do it, but it, it's definitely going to be an upset if they're able to pull that off. I, I like Burns in this one a little bit, but they're going to have to play well. Um, West Florence, I can get a mean thing in this game. Yeah, I, I cannot wait to see, you know, Kai Cook and Bomar and Weaver go up against Kelvin Hunter, like one of the premier DBs in the state here for West Florence. It'll be a super fun game there. You know, you worry a little about the long bus drive. That's not an easy place to get to from Duncan. Duncan down to Florence is a long ride, man. Uh, these kids probably have not been on a bus ride that far before a game, maybe in their careers, honestly, because I don't remember Burns playing a game this far away um, in the past couple of years at least. So a big ride for them. I do want to bring this up, uh, John. Special teams is always key in big games like this, right? That's what big we time. say. Big so so let's, let's take a look back at West Florence's last game before the bye, what happened on their special teams there. Um, they had a block punt for a touchdown. Uh, had a uh, a kickoff return for a touchdown as well. Okay. Uh, made all their extra points, and I believe had all touchbacks as well in their kickoff. So, South Florence had some really good special teams there. Uh, the Cashin kid is a kicker. Spence, you know, that name from kicking all the way, you know, Clemson <laughs> Alex was not and whatnot. He's their punter. Their kickoff guy does a really good job there for West Florence. But, yeah, block punts for touchdowns, kickoff return for touchdowns. That's tough, man. That's tough. If you get one of those in a game that could be this close, that could be the deciding factor. What is it, Alex Spence from Florence? Yes, exactly. I think it's it's either brother or cousin, something like that. Yeah. All right. So we got in bloodline. And and tell you what, with the with the playmakers that Burns has, if you can uh, take away that return game, Mm -hmm. that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. And and this is and this I love this about high school football. There's always some different variables that you don't have at other levels of football. Remember what time they showed up. It ran high school last Friday. They That's had right. trouble with the bus. That's right. Got there. I think Rob Brown was telling us like 20, 30 yeah. minutes before kickoff. Didn't really have a whole lot of time to get ready and get warmed up. Um, boy, you don't want to tune up the bus. Let, let's make sure yeah. we got oil in that thing. We, we're ready to go. Um, make sure the AC is working on that thing. Yes. Make sure we're not uh, pumping it down I-20 to get there in time. And rushing off the bus to, to play a, a really good West Warrants team. Kind of got away with it last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't want to have that problem on what will be uh, 
gosh, probably a 150-mile trip. It's not close. It's not there. close. But I, I think this is the Rebels' biggest test. You know, Deuce Hudson is really good offensively, um, along with Lloyd, Darren Lloyd, an underrated running back. You know, then we've got uh, Bennett and, and uh, Benton out wide are really good players. Really, it's pleasant for them. This is a tough one. You know, I, I like what Jennerette and the Knights are doing there, you know, playing at home. Big game for them, of course, going off a bye week. I'm going to lean the Rebels as well in a close one. Um, I think Burns I think Burns is out to prove. I mean, you know, they've, they've tried to prove us stuff each week, it seems like. You know, they, they, they love the haters, but I think That's this true. week I think we're both leaning towards Burns. Um, they're still wanting to get some respect. I think the Rebels get a win here. A close game. And if you're a Burns fan, or if you want to just check out a preview, we you know we had Coach Jody Generet on preseason kind of pre- preview in the night. So go check him out and learn learn about that team a little more before you get down there. But it should be a really fun game down there between Burns if, and West Lawrence. And if they take an L Friday, big trouble. Yeah. Because this region is going to be it's getting better and very better. tough. It's getting better and better. Spartanburg is playing some good football. We know Dorman. We'll talk about Dorman here in a minute. Dorman's playing really good football. And then Gaffney, if they can stay healthy, mm-hmm. getting um, – so what's the receiver? I know they had an um, amazing little John. Was, yep. Amazing little John was taking the brunt mm-hmm. of um, that passing game against Mallard Creek, but then getting a second option um, outside. Obviously, was a huge difference maker for them in that Northwestern game. It's going to be a high-quality opponent, high-quality region. They need a good springboard a uh, week before region play. Uh, the week off in of Spartanburg mm-hmm. next week. Big time game. Um, but hey, let's get through this week first. We'll worry about region next week. But um, could be a big springboard or a uh oh. We got to figure so, some yeah. stuff out very, very quick, if not. Yeah, a couple comments. Zach says that drive from Burns West Lawrence to the doozy. Yes, it is. Uh, Ryan Franklin says great matchup. Eric says thoughts of Marlboro, Dillon County. Yeah, uh, that Highway 9 game, like I said, always a big one. We'll get to that in a little bit here. First thoughts, I'm leaning Dylan, but should be a good ball game, John. We'll kind of break that one down as we come to it. Um, good to see Marlboro County playing better. This, it is. This is uh, first time in a few years that seen the seen Bulldogs get back what we expect them to do. Yes, yes. And then our fourth Kona game of the week here, John. A big-time 5A matchup here. 5-0 River Bluff at 4-0 Dorman. You know, I'm not sure going into the year. I think everybody thought Dorman would probably start off hot, probably be 4-0 here. I'm not sure how many folks thought River Bluff would be 5-0. No, you know, we know River Bluff is a pretty good team, mm-hmm. um, but they've been pretty impressive. Yes. They're, nobody on their schedule I would expect them to lose to. Um, however, South Aiken, Jarrell, very, very high on South very Aiken. Very the yep. They were able to uh, play a really tight game with South Aiken, able to top them. An Irmo team that we're learning more and more about every mm-hmm. week that is playing really good football, they destroyed the Yellow yeah. Jackets uh, earlier in the season. I think River Bluff is a pretty doggone good team. I didn't put them in my top five. Um, I had them in my top five last week. But they're on the edge. Yeah, they're, they're, they're right there on the bubble. Um, I wasn't super impressed with the, the win against Lower Richmond last Friday. Uh, Lower Richmond's not very good this year. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a game where River Bluff, they can prove themselves. Yeah. Um, and I know that's weird to say about a team that's 5-0. and But um, going up against the Dorman Cavaliers, you can certainly do that. And, and for Dorman, you know, really for Dorman, same kind of thing. You know, they walloped Greenville mm-hmm. week one. Ran all over them, 300 uh, plus for Demarius Foster, player of the week. Greenville was breaking in a 10th grader at quarterback. First time he ever played, played really well, Dorman Saint. Um, you know, played pretty good North Augusta team, pretty good Greenwood team, a good Clover team. They've been tested. This could be their biggest test of the, the year so far. I think they're the better team. They've done more um, to this point. I think this is more of a prove-it game for River Bluff. And uh, you know, for Dorman, um, I, I like I like their chances in this region. I think mm-hmm. they're really good. Mm-hmm. But they need a strong showing to, again, same with Burns. Let's have a good showing before you get into region play to get your confidence going and, and kind of scare the rest of your region opponents, too. Uh, you know, both of them have a great opportunity going up against two really good teams, West Florence and, and River Bluff here. Yeah, River Bluff led by running back Cooper Johns, one of our Super 75 guys, John. Last week ran for 189 yards, three touchdowns. They're averaging 155 a game there. But as a team last week, they ran for 341. So they really got all over Lower Richland there. Um, they do have a young sophomore quarterback, Parker Murray. He's going to have to make some plays in this game. You know, I think there's three games so far where he's at under 10 pass attempts. 
and I don't think it's going to work if you're trying to beat Dorman. He's got to throw it a little bit more than that. Uh, love what Jonathan Cook and Drew Surratt and Connor Clemp doing on deep on the defensive side there for those guys. Dorman, the running backs, Demarius Foster, Kendall Lewis, quarterback Hudson Talley is playing great, DJ Porter out wide. The big O line, everybody knows the DJ Geth, North Carolina commit, Mark Anderson, South Carolina commit, They're really leading those guys there. Defense with McCullough and Conyers and those guys there. Last week, Dorman gave up 300 plus yards to one receiver out of Clover. So you would think that maybe how you have to attack them, and I don't know if River Bluff can do that. You know, River Bluff's been more of a ground attack so far this year, and I think if you want to get into a, a you know pounding pounding ground game against Dorman, I think you're going to lose that against the Cavaliers. Yeah, it, and the problem too is how good Dorman is offensively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they put up a lot of points against a really good Clover defense last week. Um, you can't be one dimensional. You, you can't be one dimensional against a really really good team to begin with. Yeah. You especially can't be one dimensional offensively against a really good team that has a really good offense yep. that's going to put up some points. Um, they're going to have to keep up uh, on the scoreboard. Whereas, you know, we talked about that Southern Ocean side game. Mm -hmm. It's not the case. That's going to be a, more of a defensive game, yeah. I think. You get a couple big plays, you might be okay. This game, you're going to need some chunk plays. You're going to need those big 20 yard plus plays to, to stay in this game. And to do that, Going off of what Dorman's done, you need to be able to attack that pass and you need to be able to put the ball in the air. Uh, I don't know. If we know it, we know River Bluff. Knows it. Yeah, um, yeah. How much they've been able to accomplish that this week in, in preparation, we'll see Friday. I, I'll be surprised if they come out and they're able to um, throw the ball all over the field. Yeah. I That's one, another reason I think Dorman's got the advantage in this one. But, um, they're a good team, and, and hey, here's time to put it together. Here's yeah, time to put it yeah. Together. I think we're both leaning Dorman here. It sounds like um, if River Bluff wins this game, they, they're gonna put five on notice for sure. But I think the Cavaliers are a little more proper. I think they win this one here in a close one, John. And now our skis of game of the week brought to you by Kona here. Hilton Head Christian at Buford Academy. The Eagles two and two, but they've won two in a row here. John beat Northwood fifty six to six last week. Buford undefeated, had a 43-14 over Orange Road Prep, one of the favorites in two-way here. You know, uh, Hilton Head Christian, really pass happy. They kind of get four and five wide out there. Quarterback Dylan Clark throws it a lot, also runs it a lot. He's their leading rusher and passer, running back the Baden Ball kid there. They have Reese Anderson Wilson on defense. They're the two-time defending state champion, kind of rebuilding a lot. But the problem for those guys, John, is they can't stop anybody running the ball, <laughs> which Buford does very well. Uh, you know, they ran for 365 last week with Devontae Greenville for 173 and Jackson Border for 142. The quarterback, Braden Deneen, is also a dual threat, runs it and throws it. Defense led by Gregory Gonzalez and Williams. I know that Chris, Christian is a, is a class up from Buford here. What are you leaning in this ballgame? I like Buford in this game. Mm -hmm. I think maybe it's a little bit of an upset, but I like Buford in this game. They've, just, they've taken care of business. Yeah. Um, they've done really well. You know, I really like, from Hilton Head, that Ben Lippin one was pretty big. It was. Uh, uh, previously big unbeaten big Ben Lippin team, I believe, at that time. That's a big deal. But, you know, they got some blemishes. Mm -hmm. uh, they got blown out by a Savannah Christian team. Um, got beat up by Wilson Hall in a game mm -hmm. that wasn't close. You know, I... I, I not surprised if Hilton had wins this game. Um, they've got the pedigree. Yeah, they you know they they're the they're the premier program in mm -hmm. this matchup. But I, I like Buford for a little bit of an upset here. I think I do too. A little more physical, a little more hard nosed. Um, I think that run game, you know, it's kept, like we talked about. I think they were they were our game of the week for the Wilson Hall game. We said you know if the Bears can get an early lead against these guys, they can kind of run the clock. Same thing here for Buford against Hilton Christian. If the Buford can get an early lead, run an attack, really gets rolling there. I think they win this one, too. I think it's going to be a close ball game. Yeah, you control that time of possession. They yes. do that. That would yes. be a big deal. Keep that ball away from Hilton Head as well. Mm -hmm. I think that would be key. Uh, yeah, I like the way that this game sets up for Buford. Yeah, should be a really good one there. So that's our last uh, game of the from Kona. Run through those again. We had St. Joseph's traveling to Southside Christian. We had Sumter going to Oceanside Collegiate. Burns going to West Florence. River Bluff going to Dorman. And then Hilton Head Christian at Buford Academy, our game of the week there for Skiza. If you guys have uh, missed any of those, you can tune back in once the show is over and get uh, get that feedback on those games. A couple comments here. Terrence says, uh, Wade Hinton has her handfuls this week with Bamberg. Yeah, that's a big game there for the Battle of 6-1 for sure. A, a, a really fun one there, John. Um, they got a chance, I think. I think they got a chance. They do. They do. Before we're going to do it, give a quick shout-out to our friends, uh, the Georgia Agency 
service health for over 35 years and insurance needs. They have offices of Mullins and Merle's in the Mullins and Merle's Inlet help you all across the state. They concentrate on employee benefits and health insurance. Got clients in Greer, Rock Hill, et cetera. So they can help you wherever you are at the GeorgeAC.net. Our previous show brought you by Security Managed Federal Credit Union. Offer much lower loan rates and don't charge the fees other banks do. Whatever your personal journey, Security Managed is here to offer you smart financial solutions. Join today at securitymanagedsu.com, securitymanagedsu.com. Win at banking, thrive at life number NCUA. Our games of the week from Carolina Orthopedic and Neurosurgical Associates. They offer the most advanced training and experience in orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, sports medicine, and pain management in the upstate. They offer a synergistic approach to the spine, skeletal system, nervous system, and supporting structure, meaning total quality care for your optimal health. Three convenient locations in Spartanburg, Duncan, and Greenville. Corner.care, that's corner.care. Then our stock up, stock down sponsor, Founders Federal Credit Union. Get your head in the game with Founders. See how a Founders membership could elevate your financial game. Train your financial skills with our wide array of financial tools and services. Visit relaxjoinfounders.com to see if you qualify. Relax the Founders Joint Founder. Relax the Founders Federal Credit Union. Relax to founders.com. Lots of good friends of the program there, John. Also get to our friends at Hand Engineering here a little bit with our Pick'em stuff. But where do you want to start this week as far as our uh, uh, our games go? 5A, 4A, 3A. Where do you want to start with the with the statewide scoreboard here? Let's go 5A and go down. Love it. Love it. Love it. Let's start with 5A. Go ahead. We'll start in uh, local. A lot, so a lot of teams, I was looking through the schedule earlier this week. A lot of teams, they're bye week. Okay. This week. Yep. So, yep. Uh, yeah, right. Where you play gets going. Uh, a little bit more of a lean schedule this week with some awesome games still. In 5A, we've got Wando at Ashley Ridge. Carolina Forest will host North Myrtle Beach. Chapin will host AC Flora. Clover will be hosting Boiling Springs. Boiling Springs got a couple wins. They had a nice win last week. Uh, they could win this game and really get going on a coach real there. I like Clover on that one. Mm-hmm. I, I still believe in Clover. I know that. Well, some t- close games. I feel like they play games. by tough, but they can't beat anybody, it seems like. I think this is a game they can win. <laughs> I think this is one that they can win. We've got Aner going to Conway. As we talked about one of our games of the week, mm-hmm. uh, I think game of the week in the state. Dorman hosting River Bluff. Dutch Fork will welcome St. Francis out of Maryland. Uh, ooh. This is a big-time matchup. We looked at the uh, prospects yes. for the St. Francis High School. They are littered with three- and four-star talent on the defensive mm-hmm. side of the ball. I believe a defensive tackle, defensive end, and a safety and the linebacker. I think so. Are all um, either committed to – there's one player that would – safety, I believe, is not committed to mm-hmm. a school yet, but um, committed – power five commitments. Yeah. Tennessee, Florida State, um, big time. Uh, Maryland, mm-hmm. Penn State maybe is one. Um, big time commitments. Dutch Fork, this is going to be their test offensively. If they can, if they can score, move the ball on these guys, look out. But this is a no. This is like an all-star team <laughs> defensively that they'll be going up against Friday. Yeah, in the max prep rankings, I think Dutch Fork is coming in at twenty-five. St. Francis at number five. So big time game there. I believe this is uh, Dutch Fork's first home game of the year as well, John. I think oh, wow. uh, so that'll be fun for them. You know, so Jarvis Green, all you guys have heard, has not played the past two weeks for the Silver Foxes. They kind of kept it hush hush. Not sure the situation there. He is back this week. Uh, you know, the McGuire kid had filled in very well for him running the ball there. Still kind of trying to figure out the quarterback spot with Appler being hurt. Um, they got to get. Uh, you got to feel like they got to have some kind of pass game to win this game. You would think, but we'll see. Uh, love Jarvis Green. Love what Coach Knotts does there. The defense has been really good for Dutch Fork with Chandler, uh, Chandler Perry, um, Lane and Danley, and those guys there have done a great job on that side of the ball. That's going to be a huge, huge game there. I won't be surprised if Dutch Fork wins this game, but it's going to take a big-time effort from Jarvis Green. And if he wins this, John, he may vault past Lenore Sellers in the Mr. Football race. Yeah, if he has a big game Friday, I, I don't see Dutch Fork winning this game. Mm-hmm. I think there's just too much defensively coming down from the St. Francis team for them to um, get much going. If, if they had a little bit better quarterback play, I, I would feel better about the game yeah. for the Solar Foxes. I'm just – I haven't I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Um, but, hey, they can prove a strong Friday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple comments here. Jarrell says, both teams are nationally ranked. Dutch Fork, Dutch Fork representing the whole state here. Josh Green's back this week. Yeah, exactly. I think this is one game where I think the whole state's probably pulling for Dutch Fork. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you, you want to make South Carolina look good. You, you know, people want – we want them to respect our football here in state. You need Dutch Fork to win this game. Uh, yeah. So I think yeah, they'll have a lot of fans running out from across state for sure. 
Chris Cox says, open day hit screen with a perfect time. It does. Hopefully get V. Morton back here soon. Chris, great chatting with you uh, Friday night at the game. Love getting to meet you there. You and Bill both appreciate you guys for the hospitality. Love being down there at the BAB. Uh, had a great time at that ball game, John. But let's get back into the uh, the 5A, 5A uh, schedule here. Another big game over at the reservation. We've got Fort Dorchester at Gaffney. Um, Fort Dorchester slipped in the prep media poll. Mm -hmm. They're down to seven now. They, they've taken some lumps against some out-of-state teams. Gaffney really turned Trend the corner. Up. Stock up. <laughs> they they uh, had a rough game at home, losing to Mallory Creek. A game, I'd say, gosh, it was so rough. And they still almost won that game. Mm -hmm. um, but really, really turned the corner, had things go right for them Friday with a big, uh, very controlling win over a great Northwestern team. So now I, I think, well, Gaffney folks tell us, are we back? Are we, you know, how are we feeling? This is a game. I, ooh, I like Gaffney. In this game. You know what's crazy, John? Like, like you know, we were looking before the season started back in you know July, early August. We're like, all right, let's kind of you know, somewhat tentatively look at what games we may want to go to. Yada yada yada. This game before the season started was can't miss football. Yeah. We're yeah. like, this is gonna be probably number one or number two. Or I guess or maybe two, three, one, three, whatever it is in five A. Two of the three best teams. You know, Zoltan Osborne at Fort Dorchester. Really good player there. Um, the running backs, uh, the Davion kid, I think his last name, then, then the small kid as well. Really good players, good D-line, good O-line for Fort Dorchester. Gaffney, obviously, Grayson Law, just some of those guys out there. Little John, Sugar Jeffries at, at Y, he's back now, like you said. Defense was by Prashawn Little John, Nathan Johnson. Um, those guys are playing some really good football on that side. This game has lost a little bit of a luster to it. You know, with Gaffney had a couple not great performances early, let loose, lost to South Point, the not great game over, you know, Hammond and Union there. Fort D lost back-to-back to, back to Grayson and Clearwater, which aren't bad losses, but they didn't yeah. score on either one. So that kind of worried you a little bit. Had a nice bounce-back win last week. I will give them that. Um, this still should be a fun ball game. I, mean, I like what Gaffney's doing offensively now with Loftus and then with Tate and uh, McDowell kind of running the ball, doing a really good job getting that that attack going. And that defense, like you said, John, is getting better and better. They moved Johnson back to the D-line instead of kind of that linebacker. So he's playing great. Brayshawn Little John, maybe the best defensive player in the state. He's all maybe. over. He is all over the field. Missouri commit, super good player there. Um, you do worry, like you talked about that game with against Mallory Creek, John, and we talked about earlier in the Burns West Lawrence game. Big games a lot of times come down to special teams. Gaffney a little shaky sometimes on the kicking game looks like this year, John. So that that worries you. But this will be a, a big time matchup. You know, Gaffney's got some fuel after what uh, the Fort D coach said last year after that Dutch Fort game, saying he thought that them and Dutch Fort were the best teams in the state going into that state championship. So they've got a little bit of fuel there against Coach LaPrade. Um, I like the Indians at home at the reservation to win this one as well, but it should be a really fun ball game. Uh, excited to see Loftus and Zoltan Osborne go, out of, go at each other. Yeah, you know, forget the records. Forget, hey, neither one of these teams maybe quite living up to the expectations that we, we've got at preseason. Throw all that out and just look at what's going to be on the field Friday night. Mm -hmm. Just seeing Brayshawn Littlejohn getting after Zoltan Osborne is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I think the strength of that Gaffney defense is definitely up front. Yeah. The secondary is a little susceptible. I think, um, you know, Fort D can can spread the field and, and Zola Osborne, um, you know, put the ball in the money. That could be an opportunity for Fort D to, to move the ball down the field. But that defensive line is going to be tough. You're yeah. Not gonna, you're not going to have a whole lot of time to do that. Um, yeah, that's going to be incredible. Seeing Grayson now having two options now. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to throw the ball out wide certainly helped him last week against Northwestern. I mean, this is going to be a really, really fun game to watch. Two of the best talents in the state with Osborne and, and Little John going at it um, head to head. And then you talk about Loftus, you know, on the other side at the helm for Gaffney. Um, he's a very fun player to watch, too. Um, committed to Duke. Yep. I'm going to be a Blue Devil next year. A Duke program playing a lot better Stock football <laughs> right now. So that's really exciting for, for Grace. I'm sure he's up. Uh, Pump about watching those guys and exciting what they've been doing. Yeah, and it's gonna be a great game at the reservation. A lot of fun. Don't let the records dissuade you from going to this game. This is still gonna be a really, really fun game. Yeah, uh, freshman running back Jaden McDowell for Gaffney, a name and a guy to keep an eye on. Will be really good here in the next couple of years for sure. Moving on, we've got uh, Somerville taking a tough loss against something mm -hmm. last week. They will go to Goose Creek. Rent will be at Hillcrest. JL Man will be hosting Wade Hampton. That's uh. So you can get Wayne Hampton won a couple games. Uh, you know, JL Man's on a two-game losing streak, uh, but they lost to Greenville. These are two pretty good teams there. 
this is a game where I think Jail Man should win. Um, if they don't, then then they're in trouble. And if Wade Hampton wins, they're like, oh, maybe their generals are actually okay. So we'll learn a lot about, I think, both teams in this ballgame Friday night. Uh, Jones got some good quarterback play. Yeah, Tankers League. That, that's uh, a big deal. Had a Cooper good game Sink, last week. Cooper Tankers League, I believe, um, playing some really good football for them. And that's key. Mm-hmm. If you have good quarterback play, um, you can go a long way. We'll have Lawrence hosting T.L. Hanna. Kane Bay will be at May River. Richland Northeast going to Nation Ford. Um, as we talk about, huge, huge game. Sumter at Oceanside, that game mm-hmm. at Johnson Haygood Stadium. Uh, home of the Citadel Bulldogs and Oceanside. Yep. Uh, Martin will be at Spartanburg. Stratford will go to St. James. Timberland at West Ashley. Another huge game for a 5A matchup. West Florence hosting Burns. Really excited about this. Mm-hmm. I am really excited about this game because I don't know. I'm really not sure what's going on. This will be a great game, I think, down there. And there's a lot of games I have a good feeling about this week. This one, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm excited about this one. Uh, I can't wait to hear Rob tell us about uh, mm-hmm. at the end of the night, Friday night, what goes down in that game. We'll have Lancaster at White Knoll. White Knoll. They're they, undefeated. And they made an appearance on the top 10 poll, the media poll. Um, so you got to keep an eye on the Timberwolves. Yeah, they keep way. winning. And Lancaster, too, had a good year so far in 4A. Uh, they've got, I think, one loss to Irma. And it was a three-point game, four-point game. They're playing very well as well in, in that super tough region there. Um, but, yeah, Lancaster playing some good ball. White Knoll playing some really good ball as well. Should be a sneaky good matchup down yeah, there that'll be a uh, fun Friday game. night. We'll have Seneca at Woodmont and York will host Fort Mill. Awesome. Uh, a couple comments here. Uh, we got Chad says, hey, guys. What's going on, Chad? We just talked about your Fort D, guys. Should be a great ball game Friday night uh, against Gaffney. If you missed it, you can always check that out after, this, after the show's over. You can go back and listen to that. But it should be, should be a lot of fun. Uh, John, for some 4A, 4A action now? Uh, we need off in the Midlands. We'll have Irmo at Airport. Mm-hmm. Bluffton will go to Buford. Uh, South Aiken will be at Clinton. This game could be fun. Uh, a lot of really explosive guys on the ground on both teams there. Uh, you know, Bryson James, Josh Sean Copeland for for um, for Clinton are you know running for 100 plus every week. It feels like obviously we know what Terrence Smith, Javon Edwards are doing for South Aiken. They're putting up big numbers as well. It's gonna be a fun game. It's really just whose defense plays better. I like Clinton's defense a little bit better, even though they're a, a classification lower. I think the Red Devils win this one, but should be uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, another good cross class matchup there. Should be a lot of fun down there at Wilder Stadium Friday night. Got to uh, really sharpen up on the tackling this. Yes, yes. Both sides in this game. We'll have Woodland going to Colleton County. Daniel will host Riverside. Parkwood from North Carolina will be at Indian Land. Indian Land having great season. They are. Far. They are. Liberty will host Pickens. May River will be hosting Kane Bay. Marion will go to Myrtle Beach. But this game is in our pick and I had a really hard time. Yeah. You know, Marion, Marion's played some really good ball. Uh, offense is lighting it up um, with, with the Scott kid and Gabe Cusack at quarterback there. You know, and – their, their long loss, John, was to 4A Wilson. And that was a game they had a huge lead on. I think it was like a 28-point lead at some point. Just kind of got worn out a little, bit, a little bit by the depth there in the second half. You worry about that happening again this week at Myrtle Beach. Uh, but Marion's a good football team. They're playing on the road. At Ducks, I'll say, it's never easy. Myrtle Beach starting to find some things to trade down at quarterback, I feel like. Uh, getting those young guys to grow up a little bit. Um, Cam Scott there and whatnot are playing some good ball. Jake Doty out wide for them. I'm leaning Myrtle Beach in a close one here. But, uh... Marion, Marion's team in two way. We went about to talk more about. Yeah, certainly. At Swamp Fox is playing some good football. Uh, if Marion had caught Myrtle Beach earlier in the season, yeah, I feel better about them. But Myrtle Beach, you said they're they're getting better. Yep. they're getting better. They're improving. They're going the right direction, as you would expect. Um, I like Myrtle Beach. I a little bit. From yeah, game. yeah. A couple comments here. Uh, Derek says, "What's up, fellas? Finally got. Sorry, I got on late. Probably not should be a good <laughs> test for us." Yeah, Lakeview game will be a good one. We'll get down here in a minute for sure. Um, Chad says, Fort D finally scored some points. They did. That was a big to get that going after a couple of tough weeks against some stellar competition, like we said, though. Uh, Zach says, did I hear you say something about Wilder Stadium? Yeah, it should be a fun game down there at South Egan and Clinton, no doubt about it. That'll be a, uh, a high-powered offense, uh, offensive matchup. Um, I like what Coach Campbell's doing. And, you know, Zach, stay tuned. This week may have something big with Coach Campbell coming for you guys. Uh, we'll see if we can get that lined up. But, uh, one more comment from Scott McGilvery. Scott, good to see you, buddy. He said, Marion should have beat Wilson. Yeah, they had a huge yeah. lead on those guys. Uh, yeah. First quarter, first half, had a big lead. So they just kind of ran out of gas. That Wilson team, though. It's a really good team. The football team. We, we weren't high on them early in the year, but we are now. They played Dylan very tough. You know, they had some nice wins. They beat Ainer, beat Marion. Wilson, no slouch. Uh, Marion, I think, will give Myrtle Beach all he can handle Friday night. Yeah, I think that's going to be a good game. And talk about, you know, we, we pick on Fort D a little bit, uh, not being able to get the ball in, in the end zone. They played some really, really good. Kind of the out-of-state team. Yeah. 
defensively. Yep. Um, it's just like what Dutch Fork's going to face Friday night. Yep. Um, nobody at Dutch Fork should be laughing at Fort D because they're, they're going to get to experience that kind of ball um, Friday night. And not that these other teams out of state, not that other states are better than South Carolina football. Just I appreciate our teams. They're yep. saying, hey, we'll go play the best play anybody. in our state. Love we'll it. We'll play anybody. I love it. Um, and I love that. And, and uh, yeah, we've got them sometimes too. Yeah. We've got them sometimes too. So, it'll be interesting to see that, but no disrespect to Fort D. We know they're a good team. Um, they just played some really Do you got to mention this? Uh, big comment is that uh, Chad just says Fort D will be without Zoltan Osborne. I uh, have not heard that. Um, Chad, if you got some more insight on it, let us know. We have not heard that he'll be out. Um, I know he did play last week, I felt like, so unless something happened late in the game, I didn't know, or this weekend. Um, but if he's out, that's a game changer for, for that Yadney Fort D game. But, yeah, is that, Chad, if you got more info, Feel free to let us know. If you don't want to put it in here, feel free to DM us or whatever. I'd love to hear about that. I uh, didn't know that Zoltan um, was not playing. That's a that's, big loss for the Patriots, if that's true. That is very, very big. Um, yikes. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, yeah. Hope Zoltan is okay. Hope there's you know, nothing physically um, serious with him. Hope he's fine. Um, um, thoughts, thoughts and prayers to the backup quarterback because he's going to have – it's going to be a heck of an introduction. Yes. Um, if he plays Friday. Uh, yes. When he plays Friday uh, at the reservation. Uh, good way to break in somebody new. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Wow. That's uh, that's big. Thanks for that news. Um, yeah. Oof, that's that's interesting. Uh, losing my place here. Okay. Wow. Richmond Northeast will be at Nation Ford. Southside will host Easily. Uh, Easily team is playing a lot better football Yes, now. yes. Freshman quarterback Caleb Sutton, one of our players of the week, had a big game last week. They got back-to-back -back wins. Actually, maybe three or four in a row, actually. They beat JL Mann two weeks ago, who was unbeaten. Nice win last week as well over uh, – where they beat? doesn't matter. Anyway, big win for those guys. <laughs> and they're playing some good ball right now. Uh, we've got North Augusta at Strom Thurmond. That's a game that got a lot more – you know, last week, uh, Strom Thurmond beat Evans pretty handily. I think it was about three scores. Um, their quarterback is back. I think his name is Denton. I think it's his last name. Really good player. They're watching Greg Bryan. a big-time player for Strom Thurmond. North Augusta struggling a little bit, um, you know, right now. They hadn't had a big win yet, I would say. They lost to a tough, tough Dutch 14 last week, of course. Lost to Greenwood a couple weeks ago. Had a goal line stand, go against him. Couldn't quite get the ball hands on. But like DJ Curry, like Colson Brown a lot, Coach Quinn does a great job there. That'll tell us a lot about both those teams, I think, Friday night, John, uh, that Strom Thurman North Augusta game. Certainly, certainly. Uh, easily not enough Woodmont. Woodmont, that's a, a good, a good one team. 36 yeah. last week. Big one for Easily and Hop. Uh, we'll have Midland Valley at Swansea. Midland Valley, tough L to Westwood last week. They played some good ball, but took a tough loss. So maybe maybe they're kind of coming back down off that high, but, but we'll see about, uh, about the Mustangs. We'll have Travelers Russ hosting Berea. I get, I get, you got to lean Berea here. I mean, TR is just struck. Now, I'm going to go TR here, Drew, just for you. This, is, this could be a, could be a closer than the experts think game here, though. It should be, but it could be. Certainly, it looks like it could be a rather close game. Uh, one of our games of the week, uh, West Florence, as we talked about, Big mm -hmm. 4A hosting Big 5A Burns. Uh, Greer will be at West Side. A Greer team that has really struggled. Uh, lost to Bowling Springs last week. Got some good offensive players with the Martin kid and, uh, you know, Chase Bird out wide. West Side plays some great football. You know, yeah. Cutter Woods has got that thing rolling there. The Boston kid out wide. Jameer Boston plays some good ball. Coach Early doing a great job there. West Side is quickly kind of vaulting up that 4A uh, top 10 as well. They're playing some good ball over there in Anderson County. And, I think they win this game, but uh, but Greer has the talent to, to beat anybody. They just haven't put it all together yet this year, it feels like. Yeah, the fact that Greer played Burn so tough is uh, super impressive. And the fact that's got to resonate with everybody that's got Greer on the schedule. Hey, we got to take these guys serious. They've been yep. down a little bit the last couple of years. Yep. But um, they got the talent. You got to take them serious. You got to you gotta make sure you got all your T's crossed and your eyes dive and playing them. Yeah, a couple comments here before we get into 3A. Chad says, separated AC, Zoltan Osborne said Trey Ryan played last week. Okay, I must have missed that. Apologies okay. there. Okay. Uh, so Trey Ryan in at quarterback, that's a big loss for uh, for Fort D there in that game. It's great that he's got a game under his belt, though. A win yep. under his belt. That that certainly does help a little bit. Yeah, Zach Walford says, uh, both Bryson James and Josh Hunkoth all from Limestone last week. Very good cool. for those guys. Two really Very good athletes, really good players. Jarrell says, the dog bowl, TR wins big <laughs> against Berea. I like Coach Lancaster, what those guys are doing over there. Uh, and Zach says, strong throwing offense is a different animal with the starting quarterback back. Beat 6A Evans last week. Yeah, that was a big win for them, and it wasn't even close either. So, big win for Sean Thurman. 
That'll be a good matchup against the Yellow Jackets. Uh, hey, and there we go. We saw about, hey, we'll play your big schools from across the state. We'll, took them out. We'll whoop them. Took Great them job out. of Strong learning that. That's awesome. I didn't. I knew Evans was a big, a bigger school. I didn't know it was like 6A. Yeah. That's, uh, that's yeah. impressive. Uh, looking at 3A, we'll have Whale Branch at Battery Creek. Phillip Simmons will go to Bishop England. Landrum will be at Blue Ridge. Calhoun Falls hosting West Oak. Chester hosting Batesburg Leesville. Mm-hmm. Now, Cyclone King, the his they've lost a couple close games. They yep. played Catawba Ridge very close last yep. week. Uh, I was very impressed with that. I thought Catawba Ridge would win that game, and I thought it would be kind of close. I was I was happy to see the Cyclones keep it close here. I think they were all Friday. Yeah, I believe they were up uh, 28-24 or 24-21. Uh, I think it was 24-21. I know it's not right. Whatever. The, they're up. They're up like 21. Uh, cause I, think, I think they lost 33-21. Whatever it was, they had a lead and they got outscored by like seventeen or twenty-one late in the game to lose that one. Um, but yeah, they played tight. I, I, you know, I, I know Chris asked about this earlier. Baseball Leesville had a nice win last week over Newberry. Um, big win for those guys. Chester, yeah, I still don't love their offense. I really don't. The defense is always pretty tough, but they gave up some points last week. I think Chester a little more firepower. Um, I think they win this game for Baseball Leesville at home, especially uh, Cyclones are tough over there, but could be a good game and. The Panthers, I think, are starting to put things together a little bit going into the region play here. I still think Chester is a little too much for those guys. Yeah, it was an impressive win for Baseball Leagues last week. I don't expect this game to be all that close. Mm-hmm. I think Chester uh, has a good good control of this game for a uh, majority of it. I okay. expect Cyclones to, to roll on this one. We'll have Clinton hosting South Aiken. Mm-hmm. We'll have Marlboro County at Dillon. Had comments on Bigger this game. earlier, too. Bigger game. Good to see Marlboro County playing better football. But the problem with the Bulldogs, the Nasty Cats are playing even better than I thought they would. Yeah. They have been very impressive so far this season. Yeah, I believe this I believe this is called the Highway Nine rivalry, I think is what it is. Makes so, sense. So that'll be a lot of fun to see there. Over at the White Walls especially. This is always a rowdy game, man. This is gonna be both sides will be into it. The sand should be packed, I feel like. You know, Marlboro County, first year coach Quinn McCullum doing a good job getting that program back uh, you know kind of back on the uh, the right track there the Timon kid at quarterback's a good player for them what's weird for, for this game I thought like Marlboro Kennedy John you usually think of those guys big strong physical tough guys I thought like this year they're not the best on the line they're a little more aired out type things like that you know the, kind of evident looking back at that uh that Von Blue game uh, Oceanside game against him Von Blue ran for I think 200 plus um, against those guys so you know Oceanside got it going up front and I think Dylan will do the same with Ty Martin, Jamorian playing, even the Oxenbach kid at quarterback. That Dylan offensive line is just tough, man, for four quarters. Like they start to lean on you. They did it against Hartsville, they did it against Soccer Steve. You know, they may they may go down a little bit early, but they just lean on your second half and really pull away. Uh Ty Martin's a special player. The fling kid is electric too. The freshman quarterback Oxendine is slowly getting better and better and better as the play goes. You know, he's he's a good runner and thrower, John. He's been he's been kind of a dual threat for them, but I like what Dylan's doing. I think they win this game, but this will be a, you know, a fun, fun matchup if you can make it down to the White Walls Friday night. Yeah, and I, I know that Marlboro crowd. They've been itching to have something to really uh, feel good about for their squad. Mm-hmm. They've got it right now with, with this team. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one. But Dylan, yeah, Dylan is, we say it a lot, they're the real deal right yeah. now. Yeah. They're the real deal right now. But, uh, hey, you got to play the game. You yep. got to play the game. So, uh, we'll see. It should be a lot of fun. Love to see this rivalry uh, get some more than she stood again. Yeah, a couple comments. Ryan Flanagan says, I heard the same. Uh, not sure what that was in reference to. Sorry, Ryan. Got a lot of, lot of stuff going on here. <laughs> Zach says he needs Jarrell to make an appearance this Friday at Water Saving to see the boys pound the rock on South Aiken. Jarrell is calling you out. You hear that? Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, Chad also says, Fort D played so good because they lost their coach, Jack Radcliffe. Yeah, it's all about that. Guy who built the program since the school started passed away last week, John. Uh, but Fort D played, uh, played a great game in his honor for sure. But Let's look back at some of these uh, 3A games here. We'll have Crescent going to Emerald. Hanahan will be hosting Porter Gallup. A Hanahan team still, they're playing good ball. Still got a coach situation going on. Hadley heard what's going on there. Uh, the interim guy is still there. They had a big comeback win over Timberland last week. Good. Porter Gallup, not their best team they've had, I wouldn't say. So I think Hanahan wins this one. But I don't know what's going on with the Hawks. I think they could be very good if they can Keep it on the tracks. Got to have some. Uh, Got to get some stability in the program as they get in the region play. I, I think they take care of business Friday against Fort yeah. Gallup. But um, yeah, you gotta don't know what's going on down there. Yeah. See if we can figure something out about what uh what that case may be. But as you get in the region play, you gotta 
Yeah, I know who your coach is. Yeah, I know who you're, who you're answering to. Uh, yeah. Got to have some leadership. Um, you know, you got to gotta have that in place for these young kids. We'll see how that goes. But, uh, hey, take it one game at a time, one yep. step at a time. Friday, I, I like their odds. Uh, we'll have Camden going to Lake City. Team that needs a win. Lost yeah. three in a row. When was the last time you said about Camden? Yeah, uh, yeah. They need a win. I think they get one. Lake City is not a bad football team at all. They're not. But I think Camden wins this one. They're not. Uh, but yeah, it, they got to play well. They yeah. got to play well. They got to uh, turn their fortune around a little bit. Um, your uh, favorite team of yours here, we've got Loris hosting Lakeview. It's going to be a really fun ball game right here. It is. It is. You know, Loris has knocked off everybody. They beat Conway last week, uh, you know, a team they haven't played since like 1985. Big win for those guys. A low scoring game. But Coach Mance is doing a great job there. I love the quarterback, the Huff kid. Duke Bellamy, one of the better playmakers in the state, uh, kind of does it all for those guys, offense and defense leader for Loris. Lakeview playing better and better. You know, Shahid Dawkins, one of the best receivers around. People don't talk about him because he's a 1A school, 1A school player, but he's a really good, really good athlete there. You know, the Foxworth kid running the ball for them. I think Loris a little bit too much firepower for Lakeview this week. Um, Lakeview had a tough win, a close win last week. I think it was Central they beat uh, tight. Yeah. I think Loris a little bit better in Central. I think Loris wins this game. I think they continue their unbeaten start of the year. Yeah, I like Loris slightly in this one. But Lakeview's still, Lakeview's still a really good team. They are. They're going to be tough in 2A. 1A. Or 1A, yeah. 1A sorry. Uh, this is going to be a tough 1A, 3A matchup for them. Yep. But they're going to play. They're going to play. They're going to make Loris earn it. Um, it's going to be an interesting game because I think we keep seeing Loris win, win, win. It's going to be a game where they've got to... Put some respect on their name, John. I, I, I know. I want to. I want to. I just... They're, they're a new kid on the block for me yeah. this year. Uh, so I, I expect them to win, though. I think they'll do well. And I'll tell you what. That win again that they had against Conway, that was that's nice very win. impressive. That's, that's very nice. impressive. Uh, moving on, we got Manning hosting Baptist Hill. Burke will be at North Charleston. Pendleton will host Palmetto. Here is a big, big game for you. Saluda hosting Gilbert. Yeah, this one was one we talked about being one of the games of the week. It's a big time matchup. You know, Gilbert, a tough loss, a two score loss to Lexington last week. Lexington, a very good team, two classes up from them. You know, Saluda playing some good ball. Did have a little bit of scare against uh, Emerald a couple weeks ago. Uh, won by seven points there. Kind of worried me a little bit. Jonah McCreary doing a great job there. Stuart Young, Coach Saluda does a great job as well. Coach Lee Part at Saluda, or at Gilbert's always good. Um, Elias Woodbury, one of my favorite players in the state. Really good running back there. They're trying to kind of figure out the quarterback spot. They had some rotation last what they were doing. Not sure what's going to happen um, with that. I could see this game going either way, honestly. Um, being that it's at Saluda, I think I might go with the Tigers. Okay. But it's going to be a good ball game, and this is one that I wish I could be at. I wish I could be four or five. I wish I wish all the games were on TV. I, this yeah, is definitely good on the screen yeah, for me yeah, for sure. Yeah. But it'll be a fun game there between Gilbert and Saluda. I, I'm leaning Gilbert in this game. Uh, I know Saluda is getting a ton of love mm-hmm. from the uh, prep media. Um, getting they're still at number one, getting the majority of those number one votes um, from the media poll. I don't know how you have them ahead of Oceanside, but maybe they know something I don't. Um, so. Hey, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. We'll see this game. This game, I expect Gilbert to win this game. But salute if the Tigers come out and they win. Okay, you got me convinced. Yeah. So this Gilbert team is very, very good. They are very talented offensively. Um, they got a little bit of swagger to them as well. Mm-hmm. This is gonna be a really good game. A Gilbert team that I thought they had a good chance of beating Lexington last week, and they played with them. They did. It wasn't like they had a couple garbage time touchdowns. I mean that that was a ball game. Yeah. That was a ball game. Um, I like Gilbert in this one a little bit, but it, it's gonna be. We're going to find out a lot about Saluda on this one, too. No doubt. It's going to be a good game. We'll have um, Chapman going to Union. That'll be an interesting ball game mm-hmm. there. Uh, Belt and Honeypath will be at Walhalla. BHP, a team that's playing some really good ball we hadn't talked much about. Yeah. Uh, defensively playing well, offensively playing well. Walhalla putting up big numbers. From former player like Bryce Payne, a lot of touchdowns. Every week it feels like offensive or on the ground and through the air. BHP, you know, you don't want to look too far ahead here, John. Uh, next week they've got their first region game. For what's probably the region championship against the Powderville Patriots. First region game coming next week. So you don't want to look too far ahead, but maybe that's on their head a little bit. I don't know. I still think BHP wins this game, but Walhalla will give them a test, I feel like, for sure. Yeah, BHP's getting better. Mm-hmm. Uh, Walhalla has been tough the last few years. Not, I don't think they're as good of a team this year as they have been the last couple of years. But uh, hey, to go to Walhalla and, and win, that's going to be a tough game. Yep. So that's the one way out there. I, I think it's going to be really good. This is another one. Really want to keep tabs on Friday yeah. night and see where this one's going. Because I, I could see it go either way. I like BHT. I think they win in this mm-hmm. game. But um, kind of go out of a lot of that. That's going to be tough. It's going to yes. be a tough test. And like you said, 
You can't be looking ahead. Not at all. You can't Not be looking all. ahead at all. Um, and and I, they're they're well coached. I think they'll have all that in line. They'll be they'll have the focus um, directly on law, ready to go. Yep. We'll have Whitmire. They will host Carolina, and Woodruff will be hosting Broome to round out the three A slate. Fun game. There are a couple comments here. Um, so we got Drill and Zach talking with Derek. Says fair enough. We'll see what's up. He can go along with some predictions. Yeah, like Lake B. Lore should be a lot of fun, man. Um, yeah, let us know what you think. If you go to that game, love to hear what your thoughts are on both those squads as well. Um, yeah, Loris has not been super, super tested. Like I said, they beat a, a very, or not very good, a pretty good common team, I felt like. Had a couple of nights with North Florida Beach already beat those guys as well. So, Lord, the team I'm interested to see more about. Five, a 5 A Conway team, though. You know, that's that's a big deal. That's true. Bradley Ramsey says, what's up, bro? Talk about Gaffney. Yeah, we did. Uh, we broke that down a bit earlier. Uh, we're both leaning Gaffney. Even more now that we learned that the Fort D quarterback, Dalton Osborne, is out. Definitely leaning the Indians at the reservation. I love what they're doing. You're getting better and better on offense. Demons has been good for a couple weeks now. The, the McDowell kid at running back is going to be a star. Like the Indians here at home. Um, Zach also says former college roommate is a Gilbert graduate. Okay. Said the boys are out for blood this week because they let that Lexington game get away from them. Hey, that could certainly be the case, man. Uh, they had a chance last week. They did. Uh, Saluda, good football team. Gilbert, good football team. Both will be contenders in their classes. So it should be a fun one down there uh, between Saluda and They know they're good. They the both Tigers, know they're good. Tigers and Indians. Yes, yes, yes. So let's look, uh, look at 2A now, John. We'll have Academic Magnet hosting Northwood Academy. Green Sea Floyds will be at Andrews. Also, I think Academic Magnet may be undefeated still. We haven't talked about them. I think they're playing some good ball. All right. I kind of write them off. I do, too. I kind of forget yeah, about I, them. I, yeah. I, that's probably not fair. Uh, Central will host, uh, or will actually go across state lines. They'll play Anson. Um, Landry will be at Blue Ridge. Buford will be at Cross. Love this Buford team. Mm-hmm. They're playing some good football. I put them in my top five yep. um, for this week. I think they're a really good group. Columbia will be at Eau Claire. Nice rivalry there between mm-hmm. two historic high schools in the Midlands. They're in the uh, metro area. Military Magnet will be at Edisto. Um, Fox Creek, get ready, this is a mouthful here. Fox Creek will be hosting Georgia Innovation Classics. Of course. Uh, sounds like a museum. Of course, yeah. I don't know what they got on the football side of things, but we'll find out. Gray will be hosting Mid Carolina. Uh, Gray starting to get better. Don't look now. Starting well, to get Four Eagles are heating up, John. You know, and the Four Eagles is, are heating up, John. The, the problem is with with two A, uh, you'd want to play Gray earlier in the year. Yeah, they're getting better and better. That defense is playing really good football. Um, we know that they're you know Coach Holmes mm-hmm. has those guys ready every week. They're getting better and better and better. Um, nobody can sleep on those guys. Yeah, they're going to be around. They're yeah. going to be around, and you know, I love how and we've got. To, I've got to do better. I'm not going to say we. I've got to be better in putting games in perspective that were earlier in the season. Mm-hmm. You know, they they lose Oceanside that first game. Like, ooh, they're great. Not as good as I thought. Oceanside is really good. Yeah. They they are better than I thought. Yeah. Um, and I gotta I gotta take that thing because that you know sticks with me. Mm-hmm. You know, Grace is a good football team. Yeah, they're, they're going to continue to improve. They're a good group. We'll have Lamar at King Street. Sneaky good game there. You know, yes. Lamar's, I think their one loss may be to that Dillon team yes. um, early in the year. Yep. Uh, King Street got a couple wins in a row now. Uh, the Myers kid, the Dorsey kid playing good ball for Coach Smith there. That'll be a fun game. I think it's homecoming, too, for King Street. Um, so that'll be fun. I wonder if they're doing the homecoming of, you know, C. E. Mur- the old C.E. Murray. And King- I wonder how that works. Maybe cool to do something like that. I don't know how that works. But, uh, that would be cool. That'll be fun to see. Uh, Fun to see um, King Street have homecoming against Lamar this week. And that King Street team, I think, is going to continue to get better as those kids develop more and more chemistry as they yeah. play together more. Uh, they got the talent. We know they got the talent there. Um, but they'll get better and better as they um, continue to play together and be able to work together a little bit more. Yep. Um, Ladder will be hosting Sherrall. Uh, tough loss with the Vikings last week. Ran into a little bit of a buzz yeah. saw. I'd say tougher loss for Sherrall. Get 76 put on by me. Uh, <laughs> sure, that's Sherrall be. Should be kind of used to it right now. Yeah. They're yeah. they're not having a great season. They're playing, they're playing some some bad ball right now. So and, uh, they're gonna have a tough time with Lad, I think, yeah. this week too. Uh, so. Should be uh, a chance for the Vikings to get back on track this week. This is I saw this game earlier this week. And I go, ooh, this is a game I wish I could go to. Yeah, Louisville hosting Andrew Jackson. Yes, that's been a lot of fun. Louisville five and zero. You know, Coach Bulwer is doing a great job there with those guys. Had a ton, I think he told me they've got 49 kids on the team, John. And it's a 1A school. You never so, see yeah. that. Uh, quarterback Ian Grissom playing some great ball for them. The, the running attack, the wideouts are playing great. Defense is playing great there as well. 
Then you look over at Andrew Jackson. Like they had a kid run for 200 plus yards last week. They're playing some good football. I like Louisville here. I feel like uh, at home, especially in Richburg, could be a fun game. Fun game. It's a good test for Louisville for sure. Now I I need to. This just popped in my head. I know Lockhart High School used to be over there. I think they shut down Lockhart. I believe so. Um, not long ago. I don't, maybe there were some kids that were at Lockhart. They're now playing. Maybe that's been a little bit of an influx of um, kids for Louisville. I mean, Louisville's still a really small school. Yeah. Couldn't have that many kids. But I, I don't know. I'd be interested to see if maybe that's got something to do with the uh, the popularity of the program there at Louisville. But either way, awesome to hear. Mm-hmm. Every time you mention that, I love to hear that. We've got Chesterfield at MACB, another team that can put up some points. Um, Chesterfield, really good team there. Mullins hosting Carver's Bay. Newberry will host Keenan. Oceanside, as we said, hosting Sumter. Mm-hmm. Huge game, one of our games of the week. Pelion hosting 96. Silver Bluff will host Barnwell. Um, Another game before the year, looked at this could be a huge yeah. matchup. Silver Bluff a little bit down. Had a nice win, though, last week. I think it was Arthur Wilkinson they beat, I believe it was. Yes. Barnwell continues to roll, beat uh, a bigger school, a 4A school, Aiken last week. Tyler Smith, one of the players of the week. Stud, uh, just killing it. Clay Pender came off some of those guys. The War Horses are doing some great football there. Um, Silver Bluff getting a little better and better with, Lee, with Williams there and whatnot, the quarterback spot. I think Barnwell wins this game uh, over in Petticoat Junction, but should be a tight game. I thought these are kind of two rivals, too, going at it, you know? Yeah, it's going to be a fun game. You Jarrell mentioned on um, on the locker room and on our website earlier this week, hey, what are your Mr. Football? Mm-hmm. You know, who pops in your head as Mr. Football? And for me, it was Tyler Smith. He's got a good uh, shot. There's some really good, good names so I was like, man, that guy has been in tearing it up um, early on. Mm-hmm. Um, really fun player to watch. You got North Augusta at Strom Thurmond. Yeah, I don't hit this again. We had a comment a minute ago. Uh, somebody asked about Strom Thurmond. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit earlier. It was uh, Omar Merriweather. Hey, Omar. Yeah, we mentioned this game earlier. going to be really falling here. Strom Thurmond beat a bigger school, Evans, I think, by three touchdowns. The quarterback is back. I think his name was Denton. Was the last name I believe it was John. Anyway, he's back. Um, you know, Coach Webb doing a great job there. Love Greg Bryant at receiver. Really good player for them. North Augusta struggled some lately. Had a tough loss to Dutch Fort. Lost on a last-minute uh, goal line stand against uh, Greenwood by seven points there. But I like Colson around the quarterback. I like the running back, DJ Curry. This will be an f- interesting game. I, mean, I think we'll learn a lot about both teams in this one. Uh, Edmund, Quan Edmund, that was his name. Okay. Yes, thank you, Omar. It um, will be a fun game there. Uh, Strom Thurmond, a lot better now that he's back. Uh, North Augusta, the, the the bigger school, you know, you feel like you maybe you lean that way. But that will be a fun game at home for Strom Thurmond especially. I think this is the one we'll definitely learn about. Both, both teams. Yeah, I think this would be a close game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I would lean a little bit North Augusta, too, but uh, Strong Thurman's got a lot going for him. Mm-hmm. A lot going for him, and it's, huge, it's so big to be able to have your quarterback, have your main guy come back. Um, that's going to be a good game. That's going to be one to keep tabs on on Friday, too. Yep. Well, at Bamberg, Earhart will be go to go to Wade Hampton. That's going to be a really big game there, too. Yeah, that's Bamberg needs kind of a signature win. Uh, you know, they played Barnwell earlier, got smoked. Um, they've had a couple tough games it looking like, uh, you know, Denmark, Olar and whatnot. They, they played in push bottle. It was going to be there. Wade Hampton had a tough loss last week as well. They did. Um, this would be a game that, you know, I'm not very high on Bamberg yet. They haven't impressed me yet. I know they've got the talent they always do. If they win this game, that vaults them way up in my uh, in my 1A team. I've got them kind of low right now. We'll learn a lot about those guys. Wade Hampton, you know, they're still replacing the pieces from last year's team. Uh, they don't have the Richard kid anymore and whatnot. Will be a fun ball game. Um, what's it called? Or the six one something rivalry that our buddy told us earlier. That will be a highway sixty one. Highway, whatever it was, it was a fun fun rivalry for sure. There. Um, I think I'm leaving Wade Hampton at home. I don't know, but it'll be a good ball game too. I'm thinking that too, but I, you know, whew, I I can't bet against Bamberg. Uh, yeah. Do we have this one in our pickle? We do. We do. I don't remember. Good who luck. I, I don't know who I picked. Good I, luck. I don't know who I picked. Yeah, a couple more comments here before we roll into to 1A there, John. Um, Derek says he'll let us know about Loris. Haven't played them in years. Always had good athletes. There. They're pretty good, too. Um, if, he, if he doesn't make it to the inside sources, well, I love that, Derek. Appreciate it. <laughs> also, it's Loris's homecoming, he said there. Uh, okay. Ryan says Academic Madden is 4 and 0. Uh, Dadrian said okay. Lo- Lockhart too far away. They're all homegrown from okay. uh, Richburg. Fort Lauren and Edgemore. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Everybody wants to play four football and baseball up here. Love that, man. I'm glad that Coach Bullware has kind of reinvigorated that program. Got the kids come out. It's great to see. Um, and Louisville is playing some great, great ball right now. It should be a great matchup hosting Andrew Jackson Friday night. Yeah, that's going to be fun. When AJ, uh, they play everybody tough. Um, yes. Physical team. They, that, that's fun. That's yeah. going to be fun. Ian fun Grissom. Matchup. 
Big time quarterback. Keep that name in mind. Johnny's a sophomore this year for Louisville. Okay. Really, really good player there. Love it. Uh, jumping down to 1A, we've got Wagner Sally. We got Black Little Hill. Battle of 601. Thank you, Terrence. Sorry, 601. I forgot about that. Okay. Battle of 601, okay. Wade right. Hampton, and, uh, and Bamber. Bamber. Yes. Okay. I didn't know 601 went that way. There you go. We <laughs> More got, you know. More you know. We got Wagner Sally at Black Little Hill. Um, Hemingway will be at C.A. Johnson. Hunter Kenner Tyler will be at Calhoun County. Buford will be at Cross. A cross team. Nice win last year. I think Lake Marion, I believe it was. Uh, you know, Santori Jones, a really good player for them. Obviously, Buford, you high on those guys. That'll be a sneaky good game, too, in the lower classes. That could be. That could be. I like Buford in that, but that could be. Um, Great Falls will be hosting New Hope. Hannah Pamplico hosting Johnsonville. The Flashes keep rolling. Big win over Atlanta last week. I think they're uh, they're in both of our top fives, I believe it was, in the 1A poll. Um, Hannah Pamplico, they can throw it all over the field. Kind of a, a contrast of style there. Malik Shippey and, and Ken Cribb there. Johnson's going to run a little bit more than what Coach Johnson's going to do at Hannah Pamplico. But that'll be a fun game. Could see a lot of points over there at Hannah Pamplico's uh, new stadium as well. Yeah, it's, uh, that could be a really exciting game. And I'm really high on Johnsonville. I, I think they're going to be, when it's all said and done, at the end of the season, they're going to be right there in the middle. Yep. Of, uh, very impressive on the ladder. Yes. Last week. Yes. I was very impressed with that. Uh, put up a lot of points on a good defense. Yep. Daydream says the uh, number one sophomore his baby is out there. Awesome, man. Good to hear. Cool. Uh like that we, we talked to Coach Bull where he talked to that offense, man. They're uh, they're lighting up. I think he's trying to go eight deep at receiver right now. So <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. that's good to hear for, for a one A program for sure. Moving on, we've got Baptist Hill at Manning. Chesterfield will be at MACB. Christ Church going to McCormick. Carver's Bay will be at Mullins. Williston Elko will be at Rich Spring Mineta. Branchville will be at Scotch Branch. As we talked about one of our games of the week, St. Joseph's going to Southside Christian. A huge region game in that one. Dixie will be at Ware Shoals, and Carolina will go to Whitmire. Yeah, one more comment here from Ryan. says, uh, Johnson has some nice skill players. Undersized OL, but they put up points. Yeah, I love the shippy kid there. Um, doing a circle back, John, one note. If you guys listened to our recap show, you heard this. But So Christ Church last week, John, scored 59 points in the first quarter. The first quarter, John. I don't know how that's possible. 59 nothing in the first quarter. Crazy to hear there. I also want to give one shout-out I forgot to do. Coach Jamie Nichols at Abbeville got his 200th win last Friday night. Very cool. Pass off to Congrats. Coach Nichols there. Big win for him. Um, yeah, John, I know we're a little bit long, so we're going to go through this pretty quickly here. Want to get our new poll out here, John. Let's do uh, 5 and 4 or 1, 2, and 3 first. Oh, let's see 5 and 4. 5A and 4A. A lot of shake-up in 4 after last week here. Looking at 4A, we have South Florence at number one with all three first place votes. West Florence at two, AC Flora three, South Point four, Northwestern five. Also receiving votes, Ridgeview and Catawba Ridge. 4A is deep, man. That was a hard one. I think we, you know, obviously you got to put South up top. Got to put West up there. The thing is, you know, South Point, Northwestern, how far do they fall? Hard to say, um, you know, what you should do there with those two after those tough losses. But I think uh, 4A is going to be a lot of fun. I think the Bruins happy at the top right now. Yeah, I, I kept South Point in my top five because they, you know, keep in mind they did beat Gaffney, uh, destroyed Gaffney. Yes, uh, really. yes. And I, for me, it's that game Friday wasn't as much. Uh, and we heard Jarrell talk about, you know, they were kind of out of sorts, maybe just a, a bad night, things going wrong, that snowballs. Um, I still think that's why I still have South Point in my top five. I think South Point is that good. Yeah. I don't think that's indicative of South Point being bad. That's what I kind of mind. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly more concerned with Northwestern. Um, this couple weeks now, yeah. you know, they struggled with Clover a little bit there. They had a tough time with Nation Ford for a half or so, and then obviously they got smoked by Gaffney. You know, I think the people we talked earlier were putting too much stock in that Rock Hill win because the numbers look crazy. Yeah. Rock Hill's not any good. And that, that so how much you know? Uh, anyway, looking back at five uh, A now. Dutch Fork, number one there for us. Number two, Dorman. Number three, Hillcrest. Number four, Sumter. At number five, Burns. Hillcrest dropped a spot, not because of you and I, John. We had both no, of them at two. Jarrell no, didn't. No. I know they had a close win over Powderville last week, but that was a nice win. Uh, they're playing some great ball. A stat I found out, Dorman, or sorry, Hillcrest through five games now, zero turnovers. You win a lot of football games doing that, John. A lot of football games. Zero turnovers, playing great special teams. The Rams are a good football team. A little bit of shake-up. We got Sumter in there, I think, instead of Somerville this week. So, fun to see here. But a lot of fun 5A programs there in that 5A poll. I hope you're not jinxing anybody, Kev. I hope, I hope you're not. I hope not, too. I hope not, too. A comment here from Derek says, why don't we tell, don't we tell you that Jaden Davis went to Plover State? I thought we did. I thought we transferred. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, he left. He lost. Uh, left there. 
Deidre said he heard Calhoun only had 18 players. That could be why they got beat 59 up in the first quarter. Jarrell said Ridgeview's only lost to Sumter with a two-point conversion late. Finally got a dollar They do. They scored 70 last week. They got the Agnew kid, the Lawson kid. They got McDaniel rolling, Tomlin's rolling. Defense playing well for Ridgeview, too. They could certainly be in that 4A poll here soon for us. And then 1, 2, and 3A. 3A, we've got Daniel, Dylan, Powderville, Clinton, and Gilbert. Um, I know that Powderville dropped a spot after that loss in the prep poll. We kept up there because I was impressed with that loss, honestly, to Hillcrest. I mean, Hillcrest is a great team. Powderville losing that game. Hung in there tight all night. Uh, I like this this 3A poll here. Receiving votes also Buford. I did the, I did give them a vote. I think they're a good football team as well. But there is another class that's really hard to narrow down to five. Yeah, you know, uh, I was impressed with that Powersville game. We, we got to listen to uh, the end of that game yep. on the radio on the way home from, from Greenwood. I mean, that just sounded like, especially at the end of the game, it was just heavyweight battle. Hillcrest, they got the football, bam, they delivered a punch. Powersville got the ball back, bam, they delivered a punch. You know, it was really impressive. It was what we hoped to see. Yes. Um, a lot of offensive fireworks. Neither team quit. Um, really impressed. I say neither team quit. Powers were really didn't shoot. Yeah, before. yeah. But that was very, very impressive. I don't think there's a whole lot of teams in the state that could do that with Hillcrest, mm-hmm. much less 3A. Yeah, and we'll, we'll have big matchups for both Clinton and Gilbert this week, too, so I'm going to yeah. learn a lot more about yeah. those two teams there. Comment from Bradley Ramsey says, found out that Sugar Jeffries will be back to play Friday for Gaffney, so good to hear good. that he's back out there. Look at our 2A poll now, John. I think, you know, we're, we differ a lot from the prep poll here in this one. Yeah. Oceanside at one, Barnwell at two, Saluda three, Woodland four, Abbeville five. I like this a lot. I think Oceanside has is, is played some great football, some great competition. They've got, you know, some of the most impressive wins in the state. Um, and then, you know, the tough loss, obviously, South Lawrence, who may be the best team in the state. Um, Barnwell playing great football as well. Big win over Aiken last week. They continue to roll. Big game against Silverville this week. Saluda, when I find out about those guys against Gilbert, yep. uh, Woodland, the team kind of flying under the radar there. Abbeville, I'm not quite as high on as you guys are. Um, I know they've had a lot of injury issues. They're still waiting to get Harrison back and whatnot. Uh, still waiting to get Rayford fully healthy. But two A is going to be a lot of fun also. Yeah, I feel really good about Abbeville. I, I put Buford there and gets the vote for me. Mm-hmm. I think they've been playing really good football. I think they're worthy of a top five group. Two um, A is really cool, but Oceanside, I just uh, it, it blows my mind that they're not one on one. Yeah, in every I, poll I, I agree. Planet. I agree. Also, receiving votes, we got Buford and Gray Collegiate there. And I think, John, if I'm correct in that prep poll, it's not even close. They've got like 15 out of 18 or something like that. 15 of the 18 go to Saluda. And I think. Don't get it. Don't get I it. I think Barnwell is getting um, the other three. Yeah. Uh, well, no, maybe it says it's because the, the prep poll has Barnwell third. Okay. Ocean side two. Okay. And I'm looking down at 1A St. Joe's, Christchurch, Louisville, Johnsonville, Southside Christian. The Sabres continue to hang in there. I know they're 0-3. Talked about it in our, in our games of the week earlier from Colna. This is a good football team, John. Um, yeah. You know, we've got three teams out of the same region there in 1A. Um, you know, I know Dadrian says that he thinks Christchurch might be the best of all of them. We'll certainly find out. You know, we'll get a little round robin there with St. Joe's, Christchurch, and Southside Christian down the line here. So it'll all kind of work itself out. But Louisville and Johnsonville as well, I think, uh, are higher or are high and they're probably where they should be there. Also receiving votes from Amber Gearhart. 1A is, is going to be fun, too, and, and luckily for us, we'll see a lot of this top five kind of shake itself out here in the next few weeks. Yeah, we certainly will, especially with that, that 1A region with St. Joe's Christ Church and Southside. And, and, yeah, I got the Bamberg vote is that's coming mm-hmm. for me because I I just – it's odd for me to see yeah. you and Jarrell putting a team that hasn't won a game this, boys can play. this year. This boys can play, John. And the top five. You know, I, I've got more respect. Them higher. Okay. I've got more respect for the one A programs than that. Uh, you got to win a game to be in the poll for me. But uh, certainly, Southside's certainly a great team. Uh, no, no, joking aside, they're they're a great team. They're gonna have an awesome ball game St. Joe's Friday. Yeah, a couple comments. Daryl Williams says Denmark Olar. Yeah, didn't quite make our poll. Uh, they play some tough ball games. I think they're gonna have a have a nice run here down the stretch for those guys. Uh, I think they are tough. Got some good offensive players down there for sure. And then uh, Ryan, Frank, Ryan Franklin says Ocean has number one two eighteen for him. We agree with you there, Ryan. I think you're right on that. Um, John, let's take a look, quick look at our pick em. Uh Hannah Engineer. If you guys aren't a part of this, do it. Get in it. We do a season-long contest as well as some pop-up prizes throughout the year. It's on our Facebook page, our Twitter page, our website. Go join our pick them from Hannah Engineering. A lot of fun. Now let's look at our week four leaders. We had our first perfect score, John. Wow. Jimmy S. gets 11 there. Big numbers for him. Tied for second are Kyle G, Brandon B, Corey T, Shady Grady, Robbie, and Dale S at nine. Tied for 
8, we've got Will F E, Tom K, Thomas D, Trayvon, Matt M, Charlie L, Allie G, Ashley M, and Dale B all at 8. I had 10, Drill had 9, John, you had 7 last week. Uh, but big hats off to Jimmy with that 11. That's a big score there. That's great. What game did you miss? I missed uh, Irma Hartsville. Okay. Irma Hartsville. Yeah, I had the Red Foxes. Couldn't quite pull it off there. But a lot of good numbers last week. Excited. This week, I think it's going to be very tough for anybody to get a, really. to get a 10 a or 11 hard, for sure. I had a hard time picking I'm scared. I might put up like a 3 or 4 this week. This one is going to be tough. Uh, Derek says, good point, John, about your 1A stuff. So good job there, John. That was, uh, that was nice to bring that up there. And then look at the overall standings. Jimmy S takes a lead now after that big week at 43. Second, Dale B at 41. Tied three, we have Ryan F, Corey T, and Corey L all at 40. Tied for six, Lance L, MB 42, David C, and Art B at 37. And then tied for 10th, Brandon B, Ben B, Tom K, and Thomas D at 36. Drill has 42, I have 41, John, you have 36. Don't forget, guys, we have not dropped your lowest score yet uh, on the week, so we'll definitely do that here coming up soon. Probably starting next week, the week after. But uh, if you look at that right now, John, a little, little bit of a gap there from that tied third spot down to six goes from forty to thirty-seven. A little yeah, bit of a group, yeah. uh, a little bit of a separation you'll see there, kind of. It's gonna be hard to make up those points as we go. Um, I, I'm worried about myself. I gotta, I gotta make some moves. I, similar spot I had last year. Yeah, a lot of tough I games, man. Yeah, a lot of tough games earlier. I do you want to give a quick shout out to our friends before we get out of here? The George Agency, a full-line insurance agency concentrated in employee benefits and health insurance at office in Mullins and Merle's Inlet, can help you all across the state. Clients in Greer, Rocky, Columbia, et cetera, so wherever you are, they can help. Bradley, Wayne, Richard, and the crew, georgeagency.net. Our preview show from Security Managed Federal Credit Union have a clear purpose to prove the financial of their members. They offer much lower loan, loan rates and don't charge the fees other banks do. Whatever your personal journey, Security Managed here to offer you smart financial solutions. Join today at securitymanagedsu.com. Securitymanagedsu.com. Win and banking, thrive at live member NCUA. Our games of the week by Kona. They offer the most advanced training and experience in orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, sports medicine, and pain management in the upstate. Three community locations in Spartan Road, Duncan, and Greenville. Corner.care. That's corner.care. Then our stock up, stock down, brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. See how a founder's membership can elevate your financial game, train financial skills with their wider area financial tools and services. Visit relaxjoinfounders.com. See for qualified membership. Relax with Founders Federal Credit Union. Relaxjoinfounders.com. Bradley said he didn't know about the pick them. Didn't get to play week zero. That's okay. We dropped your lowest week. So we'll drop that zero. You'll be good to go, Bradley. You'll be right back in the top prospect this week. So we'll definitely get that, get that in there. So like you said, not too late to join, especially we're gonna do a couple, couple weekly prizes as we can too. So definitely uh, stay tuned for that, uh, John. But and now we've gone kind of long tonight. We had a lot to talk about, man. A lot, a lot of good games out there. Um, but if you guys tune in, we really appreciate it. If this is your first time. Like our pages, subscribe, tell your friends. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all at Moving Change. M O V I N C H A I N S. Moving is our website. Hop on there for all our content. Hop in there, get in the message board, the locker room, and talk some trash with us. Talk about some different things. Get in there and definitely do that. Um, check out our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, etc. We do a live preview show here on Tuesday nights every Tuesday. We do a recap show on the podcast only on Sundays. We do interviews throughout the week. We had uh, Coach Bullware on Monday just come out. Had a couple last week come out. So definitely tune into those. And we also have our Friday Night Spaces, John, on Twitter yeah. after the game. But Friday, it's really fun. Uh, you guys can hop in there. You know, hit request. Tell us about the game that you were at. You know, John and I can only be at one game. Drell can be at one game. We can't see the whole state, of course. So definitely hop in there. Ask about a game. Give us your thoughts on the team, whatever it is. Don't be afraid. We had, uh, we had some Clinton guys, some West Side guys, Burns. We've had uh, BHP in there. Had a lot of different schools have hopped in. So definitely have hope you guys can hop in and chat with us. We've got Gaffney coming this week as, as well. So a lot of really cool stuff there going on. But uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Anything I'm missing there, John, before we get out of here for the night? I think we've covered it all. we got some really cool uh, cross-classification games, a couple region games to look mm -hmm. at, and some games that are just really, really tough to predict. It's going to be a lot of fun to see, um, you know, who can really prove themselves and, and uh, stake their claim before we really dive into region play next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for John Epps, I'm Kevin Thomas. This has been our Week 5 preview show here on Moving the Chains, and we will catch you guys next week.